This is the heavy hitch land leveler. We're going to put it through its paces today, doing a lot of different activities. Actually, I've got three different things in mind I want to try with it. I'm going to start here with uh, some of the worst areas of my driveway. I'm not sure whether I've got enough rock here yet or not. It looks like a lot of dirt still on top. Some of that may be dirt that's just on top, of course, that I may have brought in here from working on the pond last summer. But it may be some, you know, just areas where we don't have thick enough rock base yet. In any case, this uh, rig is getting rid of those ruts. Allow me to really get that rock out on top again. I can control the angle as well as how much down pressure I'm applying, and that really gives me a lot more control than, than some attachments. Sometimes that control can get me into trouble. And other times it really helps me to get the, the job done. Now it's a little harder right in here, so getting it to dig in is a little bit more difficult. Um, and I can use that change in angle to really help with that. Um, I don't have any rear ballast on. I don't even have the three-point hitch arms on. Of course, I do have the wheel weights and the rim guard, but uh, so I don't have a lot of uh, you know pushing power wheels spin pretty easily. I like that I can dig up the rock without worrying about moving too much of it, right? If I use a box blade or a land plane or the bucket or anything like that, I'm, I'm concerned about moving the rock more than I really want to. In this case, I don't have to worry about running over my cat, but uh, in this case, I don't, the rock is, is just kind of being stirred up. It's not really being transported along you know, a long ways from where it originally was. And that's exactly what I'm looking for, is getting rid of some of those ruts. Whoops, didn't want to turn it up with that much of an angle. I was talking instead of paying attention. And I find that I can make it dig in a little bit better when it's really hard. I can make it dig in better when I'm going backwards. If I shove it in going forwards, I can spin out pretty easily, like that. Uh, but I still do have that control. I think I should probably try it on a larger tractor before I quit here. Let's see how that will uh, perform. But I can really make it dig in if I put the, the, the back angle of it in a little bit and go backwards. Don't even have to lift it up really to, to switch direction because it hasn't moved the rock that much. Didn't really need much on this part of the driveway. It looks pretty good. But it never hurts to kind of scratch those rocks up a little bit. Again, it's a little more aggressive going backwards than it is going forwards. Whoa, I stopped myself there. Now the driveway is in a little bit of a unique condition where we start today. First, we don't have very many like really washed out potholes. We've done a good job this winter of kind of keeping it in better shape than that. Um, haven't had just these big washing rains that, that sometimes cause us that problem. But we did have a, a hard freeze, and on the thaw of that hard freeze, just you know, all the dust came to the surface, all the rocks went down, and we were left with this just kind of almost looked like a hard road, right? People ask why you want to get rid of that. They, they, it, mainly people who don't have crushed stone driveways, they say, well, that, that looks more like a road. Why wouldn't you really like that? Well, there's one main reason, and that is that that dust that comes to the top, it's limestone dust, at least here in the Midwest, they use limestone for this crushed stone. It's really kind of muddy, and so you have this layer of, of white mud that gets thrown up on your vehicle, and it's just, uh, it keeps your vehicle a lot cleaner if you can keep that rock up above that layer of mud. And probably a much 
less important reason, it just looks a little nicer when the rock are all up on top. Maybe that's no big deal, but it is nicer to look at. Now where Rex went on this side with the land plane, he just took one stripe down through here with the land plane as he was going to his house to work on his driveway. It was kind of wet that day and the rock would come up over the land plane and come off in, in clumps. And so that's left this washboard effect on this side of the driveway. It's not smooth at all. No, it's bad. <laughs> This side of the driveway is smooth because he didn't he didn't do it on the way back. He just on the on the way out he thought oh I'll, I'll help and well since he did only one trip that's kind of why he left it like that. Had he put more effort into it or I put more effort into it we would have got it smoothed out. But I kind of wanted to leave it because I wanted to well work with this attachment we've got today here, this land leveler from HeavyHitch.com. I'm just going to take off right down through the right side here, pushing forward. And we'll just do one pass and I'll, I'll get kind of as aggressive as I can be without, you know, digging in and spinning out. So we'll just kind of see what happens there. Uh, and then I'll probably turn around and do the same thing on the way back. We'll see how that goes. If I have too much trouble doing that, I'll have to go backwards because I do find that I can dig in a lot more going backwards. This attachment reminds me a little bit of my harrow. There, there are differences, and I'll talk about those, but the, the way it reminds me of it is that, uh, you know, again, I'm not making major grade changes to the driveway. I'm, I'm just kind of scuffing it a little bit. The difference is that with this, I can put more down pressure on it, and I just have a lot more control uh, because I can pick it up, because I can tilt it, you know, angle it, you know, it just, it's got a lot more control. So, but, but still, in, in, in general, it kind of reminds me of that hair. Now I'm going forward, and for this first pass, it's, it's really not optimal for me to push it forward like this. Uh, because I can't make it dig in consistently. If I went like this, I can make it dig in. I can make it dig in, but then I quickly get to where at this 1025R I can't I can't push it. It's not a oh, great demonstration. I'm pretty good right in here. It's not ground in quite as hard, it, it, it really goes in easily and I can go forward with no issue. Going backwards, I can be much more aggressive on that first pass. That's, that really dug in nice there. I think to illustrate the difference between going backwards and forwards, I'll try to go back down the other side of the driveway backwards. And again, that's not going to be a totally fair comparison because this other side of the driveway is much harder because we haven't touched it all winter. This is working really well. If I could drive straight, it would be working. Yeah, I'm happy with how this is uh, working to get that initially dug up here. Any little potholes or washboard effect we'll have in there will be dealt with like this. So we don't have to dig real deep. We just have to get that that hard dug up and. Uh, allowing us to kind of level the whole thing. You can compare this easily with what I was able to do on the other side. And you can see that I just wasn't doing near a good job digging in. Oh my, I can get even more aggressive now. Now this is Johnny X, so I'll have a little more power than a stock 1025R. But given that I don't have any rear ballast, as I said, I probably won't end up with a lot more power to the ground. I've got a lot more down pressure on this than what I can put with a three-point hit. I have to have a lot of weight on it with a three-point hit to be able to get the same down pressure. 
So let me illustrate this uh, the inability to push it going forward with the little 1025R. Uh, if I put that same aggressive angle on it, see I just spin. And it's serving to actually kind of pick my front end up off the ground. And yeah, I just, I can't get that same aggressive behavior. I'll turn around now and try it. No problem. Now, once I get it dug up, I can go forward. No worries. It's working really well. like I have so much more detailed control uh, than with, uh, you know, a more aggressive tool like a lamp plane. Another aspect I notice is that, you know, I didn't do a perfect job right there. Well, with a lamp plane, I would have to make a long sweeping maneuver. But here, if this one, if I just want to go back and forth another time or two, big deal. I don't even have to lift the, the tool to, to go back and forth. It, it takes care of itself. In other words, I don't have big humps of, of rock that I have to deal with or areas that I've dug out. It's, it's just a scratcher. It's really what it's doing is scratching. I wish I had a better way to illustrate just how hard this is. I mean, this is... This is a hard surface. To see it dig in like that is really, really impressive. It's available at heavyedge.com. It's called the Land Leveler. Of course, you can use code TTWT for a 5% discount. Hey, I hope you can Check out our Tractor Blitz coming up here in April. It's going to be a reverse auction. We're going to have a whole bunch of tractors that are, well, essentially new. They'll still have factory warranty. Most of them will. Uh, we'll let you know all the details about the tractors. We'll give a walk around at each one. The way the reverse auction works is it's going to lower the price every 12 hours until someone chooses to buy it. There'll be financing available. You can get pre-approved for the financing. Shipping will be available. You have to pay extra for the shipping, but uh, it will be available so we can get them delivered directly to your house. Most of them are going to be deer machines. There will be some machines that are that are probably branded other than deer, but most of them are going to be essentially new John Deere machines. A lot of them have never been off the dealer's lot. Yeah, I know, it sounds kind of odd, but uh, that's that's the situation. And, uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. The prices are going to be much, much better than new prices. And I've been trying to find a way to help you guys get tractors in uh, these more trying times, right? The prices of new tractors just going crazy. And uh, I think this is going to be a good way for us to, to get to uh, be able to get a, a tractor in your hands that's essentially new for a lot less money. I might want to go over this driveway with my Harrow when I'm finished just to get rid of those teeth marks. But other than that, I am very pleased with the result. This is, this is achieving exactly what I wanted. Let's move on and try this thing in the dirt. I had never seen a tool like this until Heavy Hitch sent it to me. And then at the farm show this year, I saw a larger one built for a skid steer, and they had a video. And they showed it working on a hump of dirt like this to spread it. Now the soil here is still too wet. But hey, 
that's the cat's meow right there. Don't forget, this is a 1025R. Not to, not to be putting down little Johnny, but it's far from a skid steer. This is hard, it's wet. I say hard. It was piled here last fall before winter. Um, I moved this pile at one point, and so it's wet down in here. And that kind of shows, you know, how much I can pull back with it. I'll tell you what, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll pull this away, and then I'll see if I can dig with it here. Wow, I really can do a really good job leveling. You don't mess it up like that. But. Now, this time I'm actually going to dig going forward a little bit into what's left of that pile. In the video I saw online, they actually got some dirt up on top of it. You know, they were able to move it around like that. Yeah. Okay, so it reminds me a little bit. I hate to say this, but it reminds me a little of a power ring. What I can do. Obviously, I don't have the spinning mechanism, and it's much, much less expensive. But just kind of tackling a situation like that and scattering the dirt, I can do that same thing. Probably a little more efficiently with the power ring. But wow. I should have put some on, then I wouldn't have uh, been able to complain about the whole ones. This is not the final grade here. I'm going to do some more work here this spring. But it does show us a little what we can do. It's a little bit of a ground engaging implement as well. You know, sort of like a not much depth, of course, but sort of like a field cultivator. Just an aggressive harrow, I guess. Yeah, a bit of a hump up here. Certainly a multitasker. This will do different things. It's drier out here than I thought, Christine. Maybe it's time to begin to get out and get our final grading done this spring. Except it's supposed to rain here in a couple hours, and it'll probably be another month before it's ever just dry. Hold on. I've got one more crazy thing I want to try with this land leveler. It has nothing to do with leveling land. But I want to try it before we get out done with this episode, but let's do so now. Okay, this may be pushing it a little bit, but I'm wondering if this thing can grab the stumps of those big bushes that Christy pushed out while I wasn't around one day. Just, you know, it just seems like it has a, a grabbing concept to it as well as... seeing another aspect of it too. It works kind of like a landscape rake. Right, so yeah, I got the stump out, but I also just reach in there and grab those leaves. I can pull them right out. Yeah, you're throwing things at me. I don't think I'm going to be able to get every stump out. That, that one there, for instance, is small. Seems like the best ones I can get are a little bit, if they're a little wider and they've got more surface area to grab. 
have real good visibility there. Have to get just a little bit to the side to have visibility. Got that one, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, it works a little like a landscape rake. Uh, the difference being that I can pick it up and unload it, right? A landscape rake, sometimes you have trouble getting it empty. I was in high range that whole time. Only using half of my pulling power. Okay, so it's not the best stump puller in the world. No, but you got it up. Uh, it's got it out of there for the most part. Now with this self-leveling loader, it's hard to get it tipped up enough that I can let you get a good look at the business end here. But these are just pieces of steel uh, that have been welded right onto this tube. And they're what serve as the teeth. So they're, they're nothing special, nothing fancy, um, but they get the job done. There's four rows of them. Uh, this is available in Skid Steer Quick Attach or John Deere Quick Attach. This is a great tool. I think it did really well on the leveling. Um, a power rake is expensive. Yeah. Does a great job, but this seemed to work really well. Would take longer, but. It's just easier to control for detail yeah. than a rear mounted attachment. And you can see it out in front of you and you can just kind of, you know, I'm not doing major movement of the dirt, although you could push, if it were a little bit drier, I could push some pretty big piles up in here. It behaves a little like a bucket up in here, right? Right. Um, if you're on the ground, so you can kind of push it. I liked the look better than when you have ran the box blade on the driveway. The land plane is middle of the road for me, but I like this, especially if you run the harrow over it again. Yeah, if I run that harrow turned over so that it's on its passive setting, I'll guess, I guess I would say that yeah. then that would be the ultimate. But even this will be fine. And in some ways, having those little ribs in there doesn't bother me, so I'm, no. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm... I rode the ATV back down it, and it, it was fine, and better than ha how Rex left it. Sorry, Rex. I don't have to worry about talking about Rex on our videos, though, because he won't watch them. Right. Come on, Rex. Thank you guys for watching, though, because yeah. I really appreciate that. Um, again, heavyhitch.com, we couldn't do the videos without them, and we couldn't do it without you being willing to purchase some of these products. Uh, we're not trying to sell everything to everybody, actually. We just need enough sales through these commission arrangements to be able to uh, keep going. That's what's cool, though. I think if somebody needs this, when they see it in action, they'll know they need it. Yeah, because uh, what I like about this is it's not as aggressive um, in, in terms of moving the rock all over your driveway. So you don't have, you don't have as much risk of messing things up uh, but on the other hand, it digs in quite aggressively so that yeah. you can get those potholes dug out. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's a pleasant day in the spring. I'm getting spring fever. Really nice, yeah. We'll probably have a second winter. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground.